Hello everyone and welcome to the Pro Guitar YouTube channel where we're gonna learn my arrangement of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I'm gonna walk you through it. camera on the right hand as well and we're going to talk about the chords and the transitions and everything so I hope you can I hope you will appreciate this uh, video lesson and it's all for free on the channel here and uh, if you like it please check out our website we have a lot of lessons there uh, and also be sure to subscribe to this channel because we're going to post a lot of my arrangements here uh, later on as well so yeah let's dig into have yourself a merry little Christmas and um, it starts off with an A major chord, I picked I pick the key of A major because we can use some open strings, that's why I do that. Um, I, I like, you know, um, keys that I can use to open strings to, to make it sound a little bit more expressive. So, anyway, it starts with a standard A major chord on the second fret, like a bar, and I play this. By the way, uh, a lot of times when I play, the right hand, I usually play a roll like this, instead of playing all the notes at the same time, like this, I play, so I make, make a little roll there. So you can see that a lot of times I will play a roll instead of just picking all the strings, like this. You can see that on the right hand camera there. Anyway, so starts off with an A major, playing that B string after, and then I slide up with my pinky to the fifth fret of the B string to get that F sharp minor chord, F sharp minor seven, and I play it like this. And then I play this pinky up here on the fifth fret, and then open E. And then I play this B minor 7 right here on the 7th fret, on the 7th fret here, on the E string, D string, and G string. So we have that open E note on top. And this is why I picked the key of A major for this song, because I can use all these open strings. So everything rings together, so open E, and then I play the chord, G string, and then I play the index finger on the fifth, uh, sec, uh, sixth fret here on the G string, and then open B string. So, and then I move to this chord, and this is actually kind of like a D chord with the E in the bass, but I'm playing second fret here, and fourth fret here, and E in the bass, and listen to this, E, or D with E in the bass, and then I just move this shape a half step down, towards the headstock, so... And that makes it an E7 or E chord with a flat 9. I sometimes play this B note right here on the second fret of the A string as well. So that's kind of just an E chord with more tension. A regular chord would sound, E chord would sound like this, a major chord. And that works, but it's not as beautiful, I think, because makes it a little bit more interesting if you have a little bit more tension leading back to the A chord again. So we go again. And that last chord I play the E, e note and then these three notes. And if you want you can play the fifth as well, well with the thumb like. And then I go again, play the A chord again. Same thing, I slide out with my second finger to a uh, C-sharp minor chord, C-sharp minor 7. Just play these, these notes. And then I kind of tilt my index finger or second finger like this. And that's tricky, you kind of have to use the second finger to make a little bar there playing the 5th fret of the E string. And if you can't do that, you can because sometimes it's tricky to do that. You can try this as well. You 
can actually move the, the second finger if you want, but make sure not, not to play the B string then because it's gonna sound bad. So. And what is that? Well, I'm playing the melody note on the e, 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 B string on the fifth fret, and I play this shape. It's actually a D major nine. It's a four to five. But I, I think of it almost like a B minor nine like this, uh, sorry, like a, like a two chord, but you, it can also be looked at as a four chord. So D major nine, so we go. I just play an index bar with on the uh, sixth fret moving up to the seventh fret, so. And then I play E string and then this note which is like the 13. So that's that's almost like a like an E11 sound leading back to A. So I'll do that second part again slowly. Like that. And then here we go. We're going to move to another chord now. We're going to play this. What is this? Well, I'm playing A in this position now instead of here. So I play and then the melody, I play that with an open E string on top and then I move this bass down or so it sounds like this. D string 6th fret at the same time as the E string and then F sharp minor 7 this shape, so that's up here on the 9th fret, 7th, 9th, and 8th, 10th, uh, so, and then I move the ba bass down to the 7th fret and play the melody note on the 9th fret of the E string, so, and then I play this chord, which is a B chord, it's a B major, And so it's the same thing as going, but I'm playing the third in the bass, first inversion there. You know, that's the chord, the second chord of that song, but it's up here as a B chord, B major. So we go, and I play this melody, and then open E string because we're going to play E7 chord down here. So let me do it slowly. E, and then I play this shape. And this is like an E7 with a third, third here, uh, third, third on the, actually on the sixth fret of the D string is the third of the chord, and then fifth here, fifth note of the E chord, and that's the fourth fret, third fret of the B string right here. So, and then it's a turnaround, which is the standard progression is this, C sharp seven, F sharp seven, B seven to E seven, standard like turnaround progression. But I wanted to make some more interesting changes there. So I make some tritone substitution. If you want to learn, learn that, that's also on this channel. I have a whole lesson on tritone substitutions and also on chord, um, uh, diatonic chord substitutions where you can learn a lot about this. So anyway, we go like this. And it's nice to slide up to that third. And then I play this chord. This is the melody note, and instead of playing a C sharp seven, I play this, which is a, a B uh, or G nine with a sharp eleven, leading to F sharp with a sharp five to make some voice leading. You hear that voice moving up, right? And then I play this a B. Uh, let's see, <laughs> B nine with a 
third on top it looks like this 7th fret, 7th fret, 6th fret and 4th fret so we go and then open E and look at this, I, I move this chord down a whole, whole, uh, whole half step, sorry so and open E on top and then I release this and play the E so that is like moving the B9 chord half step down to B flat 9 leading back to A but I'm playing B9, B flat 9 with that sharp 11 and then playing that E string so that makes it kind of like an E altered or E 7 sharp 5 chord I love that sound so you, you, we go like this and then back to A actually let me give you a couple of variations I, I play this live sometimes during uh, the holidays and when I do I like to play play different kinds of turnarounds there you know you can this is one way and I like that because it has a voice leading and it has a bass movement but some you can also go like this E7 with a D in the bass that's a E7 with a D in the bass so you move this chromatically down and then you play to this note, C sharp major, and you can move that voice up, C9, B7, and B flat 7 or B flat 9 with a sharp 11, and then back. So you see the bass go, moves like this, chromatically down, let me show you. That's also a cool turnaround. You can also do this. Uh, you can do this. B7. And then E7 like we did. And then go into this G9 with a sharp 11. Then you do the same thing as before. F sharp with a sharp 5. And then you go. That's like a F, F7. And then E sharp 5, E7 sharp 5. So that bass line goes and then back to A. So now I'm elaborating a little bit, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun with the arrangement. Which version do you like best? Just pick your favorite and play that one. <laughs> anyway, if you want to learn how to arrange in this way, I have a lesson called Arranging for Fingerstyle Guitar on the Pro Guitar website, so be sure to check that out if you want to learn how I think about this stuff when I arranged uh, in this way. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, after we've done that, uh, I play the A chord again, and, I'm, and this time I do this. So I play A chord, just like before, slide up here to this A chord, and then open E note, and then play F sharp minor 7 here. So that's an E on top, open E, and then these three notes. And then I play this. What was that? So. Almost. <laughs> Let me do it again. So what I do there is I play a, a three six two five in in a kind of a faster way. So with the melody on top. So I'll do it again, and then I do this pull off. So I play fifth fret and seventh fret, and then pull off open. And when I've done that, and I play that open E and then this bass note and these two together. G and D here, right here, 
and then half step down and then open B and then a C note sounds a little bit wrong when it's not in context but and then B7 F in the bass to E and then G sharp in the bass so slowly Nice, huh? So And then I play this. Easy again, right? It's A chord. And then open E. But I'll do this. And what is that? Well, it's an A chord first. And then I play an F sharp minor. Uh, chord, F sharp minor 7, and I use the thumb and these two fingers here on the 4th fret and then I actually use the index finger to press two strings at the same time, the G and B string, like this. And that is not an easy thing to do because we have the E on top, open. So this chord is not an easy chord to grab, but try it. With the nylon string you can't really do it because it's too the neck is going to be too big to grab that with a thumb but you can try it on, a, on acoustic uh, steel string or electric. And then I play a harmonic on this um, 14th fret of the G string so I use my index finger to lightly touch the string here and, and play the string with my right hand thumb. That's the harp harmonics technique. I have a whole lesson on that too if you want to check it out. So like that. So we go harmonic like that and then open E and then I play this just D chord kind of like a D6 so it's open E here and then these notes open B and the cool thing is here I'm gonna keep the pinky here and then I'm gonna move this shape down a half step so we go This is a cool E7 chord. It's just an E7 with a flat 9, but I have the 7th, flat 7th right here on my pinky. I love that sound. So you, that's voice leading as well because we have D and then right, like that, right? I feel like a comedian who explains why his jokes are funny when I do this. Sorry. Uh, but. <laughs> You know, I try to try to show you exactly how I play it, and I've, I've been working a lot. I remember working a lot on the, this arrangement to make it sound beautiful. So anyway, <laughs> we go. Explaining why it sounds good. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so here's E7, and then I go A7, or A major, sorry. Um, and let's see. Same thing as before. And then I go to this G sharp minor 7 flat 5 chord. So that's G sharp, uh, G sharp minor 7 flat 5. And this is like a D7 with a, with a flat 5 or sharp 11. Moving down a half step to C sharp 7. And then F diminished, and that's just an inversion. That's just C sharp seven, and I play a diminished chord from from its major third, so it 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 it, it makes it more tension to the next chord, right? So it's this diminished chord is exactly the same thing as playing C sharp with a flat nine. Is that sound? And then to this F sharp minor. Chord, just this th these three notes. So I'll do that part slowly from the A chord right here. And then I go to this uh, minor 7 flat 5. And then I play that fifth in the bass there. So let me play it one more time.
And then I play a lick, and this is just kind of an improvised thing when I was playing this arrangement the first time. I was playing just over this chord. So what I'm doing is I'm playing over F sharp minor, and I play a C sharp minor arpeggio. Like that. And that's a roll actually with my right hand. Thumb, index, middle, and then thumb here. That's how I do that roll, almost like a sweep. So when I've done that, I go like this. So that's just walking into the minor third of the F sharp minor. And then up to the minor third here, walking down. And I'm going to play an a, E minor 7 to an A7 uh, dominant going into the D major chord. That's why I go into... And I play this open lick here. Let's see. E minor. I go like this. And that's just an E minor 7 thing. Open and open. So that's like it, oh, using open strings there. And then, so I'm going sliding up from the minor third to the major third when I hit that A chord. So let me do it again. Into that uh, D major seven. So that's a lot of altered notes, there are some altered notes. And what it is, it's just I'm playing, putting tension on that A A7 chord into the D major 7. So let, let me play it slowly. And then open B, uh, open E, sorry. the D chord. I'll do it again. And then I walk into this D major 7 chord. It's just these three notes barred on the 7th fret and then pinky here on the ninth fret. Open D note. And then I do this chord. So I play that 2nd finger and then I bar on the 6th fret on the G and B string. And then I play this melody. And what is that? Well, I'm playing D major 7 to A7 with a sharp 5. Or you can also call it like a D minor major 7 chord. To A. A major 7 with the 3rd in the bass. And I play that this way. And then I move these two fingers down a half step, so... To get that C diminished chord, so... And then... Melody to B minor 7. Simple, just a bar. And once again that roll using my right hand, right? And then I play E note. I'll play that slowly, that whole thing. And what is that? Just when I play the E, e note, I slide up to the third of E, sixth fret here on the D string. And then I play a pull off, I make a pull off, hammer on pull off there, so. And then I play an open A note, because now we land on the A chord there, so. And then I make this lick. And what is that? Well, it's just a line over A major 7. 
I play this. So I play on just a major scale, A major scale, up to this note. So, but I'm using open strings, so make sure to check out this slowly, like that, like an A major seven, and then slide up with my pinky and uh, index finger, open B note, and then I play this roll. To make them ring together, so that's C sharp here on the sixth fret of the G string, and then this third fret, and then open E, like that. F sharp here on the seventh fret, G sharp, and then I play this chord. And what is that? Well, that's an uh, that's a D sharp minor seven flat five, <laughs> and then I play an A in the bass into this chord. That's probably the most, you know, outside, outside, out sounding chord, sorry, in this whole arrangement. We're playing G sharp 7 or G sharp 13 with a flat 9. And then I do this. So I'll play that slowly. And what I do this, I'm playing uh, here, I'm playing the uh, ring finger here on the fourth fret of the G string, and I play. That's typ typically, you know, Cherakin's Tommy Manuel thing where, where he plays like, like a pull off to make it more express expressive, like a singer. So after I've done that, I go up to this C sharp minor 7. Play the melody right that, right there, sorry, to C7, B7, eh. so that's just B7 chord, B dominant 7 with that melody, not, melody line right here, and then open E, sliding up to the sus4, so that's like an E, e sus there. And then after I've done that sus chord, I'm playing a line over this E altered or E chord leading back to A. And I put some tension here, so it sounds like this. I'll do it again. And what is that? Well, it's just an E arpeggio. E dominant 7 arpeggio and then I play this that's a, that's a diminished sound so it creates an E7 flat 9 sound and then I slide that melody down a half step so it goes from diminished sound to an really an altered sound which has a lot of alter notes. It, it, I think of this as the super Locrian, uh, E super Locrian scale or E alter scale with some chromatics in between. So that's why it sounds, you know, tension into that back to the A chord. So I'll play it slowly that line. How do I play that in that tempo, you know? Well, I have a whole lesson on that topic as well, right hand technique, but you can see, uh, check out my right hand here, how I, which notes that I play with a slide or hammer on or, or you know, um, how I actually uh, uh, use my right hand on this lick. First, and then a roll, sliding, It's a lot of pull-offs there. I'll play the line really slowly.
and then I play like a. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it's like a harmonic. So I'm using my index finger to swipe and my thumb pick to play the notes like this behind. So I'm using the index finger here. And that's just an E, E7 or E augmented chord leading back to, to, to A major again. So that's it. And I play a little bit more expressive, hopefully, on the take I just did. Uh, <laughs> that was just a lot of notes there. And then I slide down. And then we're back on the melody. And I'll play that melody uh, once again. Uh, what happens after that uh, crazy lick? I play A major again. Just like in the beginning. We've already done that part. And then same thing again. To D major 9. To E11. Or E, you know, sus. That's the E sus chord. Like with a 13 on top. And then we do the ending part. So what I'm doing here is the same thing as before, A, moving down the bass with an open E on top, to F sharp minor 7, and then I go to this chord, and I'm thinking of a, a, a G sharp minor 7 flat 5, but, what, but with the D in the bass, open D, so it's actually these chords. G sharp minor 7 flat 5 to C sharp 7, but I'm playing it like this. F diminished. And the melody on top here. And then I play this F sharp minor 9. And here's the crazy harmonics. And that is some really uh, useful technique there. I'm playing this shape with the F sharp minor 9. Actually, barring two strings with one finger here on the ninth fret, playing the seventh fret with the index finger and bar here with the ring finger on the three top strings, ninth fret. And after I've done that, I play this. And what I'm doing is I'm playing the lowest, th lowest three strings first as a roll, and then harmonic open note, regular note on the B, uh, G string, harmonic on the A string, regular note on the B string, harmonic on the D string, and then a regular note on the E string. So, like that, so. And that technique is a whole big, uh, t you know, a lot of work to get that to uh, to flow. But um, I, I actually do have a big lesson on that topic as well called Harp Harmonics Volume 2 on our website ProGuitar.com where I dig in and I teach you, you know, all, all about that technique. And remember you can slow down this video as well on YouTube, you know, you can click the slow down button. And then I play E note to an E minor 6. And that's just this shape, like an A minor shape, moved up here on the 8th fret and then pinky on the, on the ninth fret here. So I play this and then I do the harmonics. I'll do the whole thing. Then I play A in the bass, and that, then this chord. So 
So what I'm doing there, after I play the F sharp minor, I, I play the E minor. And that, that, that part goes like this. And then A string. And then I play this shape, like an E, a, a, an A7 with a sharp 5. But I'm playing A and then B string, harmonic. E string, harmonic. And then harmonic, harmonic. And then D major 7, just a bar here. And then to, to D with the F sharp in the bass. So. And then I slide up with my ring finger up to the 9th fret of the G string, pinky here on the 9th fret, and then I play this melody over B minor 7. Uh, just like that. And then I play these two notes, and that's an E chord, E sus, uh, with a 9 there, so this note, and then hammer on from the 5th fret. And then I play this chord. And that's just an E7 and a, or E chord with a flat 9. So I, I play this 6th fret, 4th fret, 6th fret, and bar here on 4th uh, fret again. So just a little bit more tension on the E chord. And then I, instead of playing just an A chord, to, play, to end it, I play jingle bells. And it goes like this. This A chord right here on, with a third on top. I play this shape of the A, C, A major chord. And then D. It's just these two notes. And then these two notes. So it makes it a D major to minor. Like a play, play uh, like a cadence there. And then any it with the A69. And that's just barring on the 11th fret and 12th frets. And then I did this. Just shaking my hand to get that sound. The Christmassy vibes. Anyway, that's the whole arrangement. Now I'll play it one more time, the whole arrangement through in a slow tempo. Here we go. First time. C sharp minor. And then we go into this. with a sharp 11 second time around flat 9, A, moving down the bass, into that F sharp minor, doing this melody, E minor, into A7, D major 7, D major, minor, major 7, A major 7, with the C sharp in the bass, C sharp diminished, B minor, E, back to A, and then this line. G, G13 flat 9, C sharp 
minor, C sharp, uh, C dominant seven to B seven, E sus, and then the lick. Sometimes I play that as a dampening thing. Just to get some dynamics. And then back. Sorry. Same thing again. Here comes the ending. Up to F sharp minor 9. yourself a merry little christmas hope you like this arrangement hope you like this lesson let us know please subscribe it means a lot to us and i wish you uh, have a wonderful day everyone and see you soon bye mm -hmm.